If you want to lower your graphics card temperatures, make it perform faster, stick around. <laughs> Today I'm going to be water cooling the GTX 1080 from MSI, it's the Aero Edition card with a blower style cooler and I'm going to be installing a Kraken G12 cooler from NZXT, or bracket rather, followed on by a Corsair H110 dual rad 280mm water cooler. Now these water coolers are typically used alongside your CPU, you get all the different brackets, they fit all the different sockets. NZXT have managed to manufacture one that fits on a graphics card. This is actually my second time using one of these. A couple of years back I used a Kraken G10 I believe it was on an AMD Radeon RX 290X and the performance difference was quite large then so I'm curious to see how it goes this time around. So the specification that I am running today is a Ryzen 2700X. It does have precision boost overdrive enabled and it is running in between 4.1 and 4.2 gigahertz. It does have an aftermarket cooler on there which is the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. Not the Pro Edition, just the standard. The Pro Edition wouldn't fit in my case unfortunately which is a Fantex P300 which was an absolute nightmare to install this AIO in but we'll get to that later. The memory is a little bit on the slow side but it is Corsair LPX DDR4 2400 MHz. I haven't even attempted to overclock that at all yet so we'll maybe tackle that later too. And the graphics card itself is an MSI GTX 1080 Aero and this is a blow style card and unfortunately the issues I'm having with it is hitting its thermal limit and it's starting to downclock the card when I'm playing games or even doing standard testing for benchmarks. So installing the NZXT Kraken G12 bracket. So this video isn't going to be a tutorial on how to achieve that but as you can see here all I'm going to do is really remove the stock cooler that was on there, that horrible horrible blow style cooler. I'm going to clean off the old thermal paste, pop on some new stuff I'm then going to reattach the G12 bracket and I'm going to pop on the Corsair H110. Now it was a little bit tight fitting in my case and unfortunately I had to put the tubing for it at the bottom rather than the top which is a little bit more unconventional but because it's an AIO unit positioning shouldn't really matter that much. As long as the water inside it hasn't fully evaporated or it has any leaks then it should be fine. Now the Fantex P300 case is a lovely case, very well built, but it does have a couple of things I'd like to mention in this case. There's not an awful lot of ventilation on the front. The front panel of this case unfortunately is a full metal shield with small grill holes at the top and bottom, which is not an awful lot of airflow that gets into it, so it was a wee bit of a concern for mine to begin with. The other thing I would mention is buying an older style cooler like this, although they are cheap, just keep in mind that um, pump noise can become an issue with them as well as the fans that originally come with them are not the quietest things on the market. I'm hoping to replace these at a later date with some Be Quiet Wings 3 fans, possibly Wings 2 fans, whichever's cheaper at the time. I have a few of them already and they're absolutely silent, great airflow, I absolutely love them. And another thing to mention just with the NZXT Kraken G12 bracket, I'd mention two things with this. If you do plan on using the port on your graphics card itself to control the fan that is on there, you are going to have to buy a small adapter to do so. It's not too expensive, it's only four or five pounds, and the fan that comes with it is only a three pin fan. So regardless, it is only going to be 12 volts and it's going to run 100%. So if you do want that fan control, you're going to have to buy a four pin fan and replace it. Something maybe from Noctua. Quite honestly though, the fan isn't that loud at 100%. It's barely audible, but if you want a wee bit more control over it, you can do. It does kill the VRM, so it's certainly best to have. The other thing I would mention is I decided to buy some small metal heat sinks that would go on top of the memory chips and the VRMs just to give them that little bit extra cooling other than just the fan. Quite honestly, I wasn't going to be sure if I needed these and it turned out the ones that arrived didn't have the adhesive like it said it would to stick them onto it. So I ended up not using them for this anyway, but everything ended up fine. The temperatures of the VRMs were absolutely fine. They weren't really any different at all. So I won't be including any benchmarks for any games today, but I will show you a few benchmarks from Valley, Heaven, Fire Strike Extreme and Superposition. These were the four that I used just to test a baseline, just so I could push the card to its limits, because the main goal of this is to bring the temperatures down to stop thermal throttling. 
but while I was there, adding a little bit of extra performance as well. So the card in general won. It was thermal throttling. It was a bit high. It's about eighteen hundred and we'll say thirty, give or take a few. And the problem was, is it was hitting its thermal limit really quickly, even with the blow style fan on hundred percent. It was dropping those clock speeds rather rapidly, sometimes down to the mid sixteen hundred, which was just not fun. And that was quite consistent when gaming as well. Had the fan up really loud to kind of keep it at any kind of performance. Now the goal with using the NZXT bracket alongside a Corsair water cooler was just to bring those temperatures down enough that the card would at least stay stable at its clocks in between 18 and 1900 and the end result ended up being much much more impressive. So I'm going to start off with the temperatures here and as you can see it speaks for itself. In the highest case it was a 48% increase in cooling and decrease in temperature and at lowest point it was 36% and that is quite a difference so the card no longer hit 80 to 90 degrees at maximum it was hitting was 51 and at its lowest point when during the benchmark was 47 which is rather impressive now that wasn't as stock either i did set the clock speed on the card to just above 2 gigahertz which it held stably throughout every single benchmark zero artifacting and the card never crashed or anything like that it didn't thermal throttle which is exactly what i was going for and we can see here just in the benchmarks, we've got Heaven Valley. I'm not sure why Superposition has changed there. It's kind of merged the two, but either way, and Fire Strike. And you can see there just from the percentages, it's anywhere from 1.5 up to 4.7% of a difference. And that is just an increase in performance for it as well. And then overall, this wasn't me pushing the card. I simply wanted to get the card over the 2 gigahertz mark, which it held stably in every test. And that was a 7.4% increase over the stock speed. Now, the stock speed I popped in there at 1873, that was at its maximum point, And it was not able to hold that longer than a minute or two before it started downclocking due to the thermal throttling. So that was never something that was achieved for a long period of time. The 2012 that I popped there, which is megahertz, that was sustained. And it did that through every test. It never dropped once. It was rather impressive. It probably could go a bit higher. I'm quite happy with the fact that it's got a 7.4% increase in performance just from switching the cooler. So was it worth it to water cool my GTX 1080? Totally. <laughs> This card was only a slight upgrade for me. I came from a GTX 1070SC edition and quite honestly from what I sold my 1074 and what I bought the 1080 for there's maybe a tenner of a difference so it didn't really cost me anything. The main kind of price here came from the bracket and the cooler which again were picked up relatively cheap. £25 for the bracket brand new and then I was I believe 40 for the cooler. But in general, you had a couple of small bits that came extra with that that you don't kind of think about. So I had to buy some Noctua paste, which wasn't massively expensive. And I bought some thermal pads for the small heat sinks, which we ended up not using. Um, again, they weren't relatively expensive either. And it kind of put the full total of this card and water cooling it in the ballpark of close to about 280 to 290 pounds, which sounds quite high, but going online checking benchmarks looking at comparisons it was a case of either buying a gtx 260 super 270 or buying the rx 5700 xt i'm not sure there's even an rx in there but um this card compares really really well to all of them and in general for me playing most of my games at 1080p it'll be absolutely fine and the occasional 4k on the tv i'm happy to drop a few settings just for it to be playable and um, so more than more than happy with the card and very impressed with the performance again i'm going to change out those fans make them a bit more quieter i do have a custom fan curve set on all of them from the cpu the one for the pump is on 100 percent and i've got the fan curve on the two on the front for the Corsair fans which are terrible switch those out for some wings that make it nice and silent i reckon it'll improve the performance and possibly even even modify the case maybe do that in another video yeah we could totally cut some holes in that what i'm thinking is do like maybe a big square at the front and then maybe put a mesh drill behind it and then put some fan mesh just some little magnets in the back of it just to catch any kind of dust and things and um, but solid case but that's all. Thanks for watching. If this video helped or you've got any questions on the Kraken G12, it is compatible with a whole bunch of graphics cards, NVIDIA and AMD. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Do you want to make your graphics card perform faster? No.
GX 1080 Aero from NOAH. Please give me a like 